Good morning. It is the seventh Thursday of the Easter season. We are just steps away from Pentecost. So we're starting today in, <clears throat> where are we? We're starting in John 17. I want to get exactly. John 17. <clears throat> Twenty to twenty-six. You know, I had it. Okay, John seventeen twenty to twenty-six. <clears throat> We're going to talk about unity and division. But let's start with the Holy Spirit prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. John 17, beginning with verse 20. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them, even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you and, know, and these know that you have sent me. I, have ma I made known to them your name and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. So Jesus's prayer here is for unity. Um, he wants the believers to be united. He still wants the believers to be united. Um, he says that one way the world will recognize him as God um, is that all believers are united. That will be a way that, that God's God's essential being that who he is will be known and proven. Um, the devil seeks to divide always. The devil wants to cause division um, and division serves his purposes. So we are called here, of course, to be on guard against things which cause division. Um, and to not let ourselves be uh, an instrument of that division. Um, unity with God and with each other is possible. We know it's possible. It's here in scripture. He calls for it. He wouldn't call for it. He wouldn't pray for it if it weren't possible. <clears throat> Our reality is that we live in a very fractured world. And I think that that is more and more apparent every day. Every day there is something new to divide us. Every day there is someone, some new voice calling for division. Um, nations are divided. Christian churches are divided. Neighborhoods are divided. Like I, it, not so much right now, but there have been times where I can walk the streets of my neighborhood and recognize what side of a division people are on based on the yard signs that they have out there. Um, families are divided. Um, these are contentious times. These are divisive times. And these divisions delight the devil. Divisions delight the devil. <clears throat> we can even experience division in ourselves. The scripture speaks to that. It speaks to that in Romans 7, 5, 7, 15, um, where 
Paul is wrestling with division inside himself. He says, for what I want to do, I do not do, but I do what I hate. That's, that's, that's a man divided against himself. That's a powerful witness to just how pervasive division can be. <clears throat> the devil uses pride as a compelling force to divide us. He will take pride and he will twist it and he will distort what you think about something and inflate your opinion of yourself so that you will divide a group or you will stand against something in order to promote yourself. Um, and it's insidious. But if we are aware that Jesus is for unity, and of course, it's unity in truth, right? Jesus wants us to be united in truth. Um, you know, he doesn't want unity for the sake of unity. He wants unity around the person of God and around truth. But the devil wants to divide. So if you can recognize that and you can see what he's up to and you can say, okay, this is division. This is, this is him wanting to create contention at the dinner table or, um, or arguments over the back fence and step outside of that and look at it from the lens, through the lens of God who really wants unity then we cannot let ourselves be an instrument in the hands of the devil. We can consent or not to division. So how do we, how do we recognize what's going on? I think one of the key things is to ask yourself, are you being selfish? Selfishness will always rupture unity because it's just looking out for one individual in a group. So selfishness ruptures unity, then what repairs it? Selflessness, acts of love. Reconciliation comes when we set aside selfish pride and we willfully commit to the common good of unity, knowing that it's good. And that is the, the important thing here is we wanna be united for what is good. Lots to think about, especially in this day and age with the current climate. All right, take up and read, people. I will meet you at 9.30. Everybody else, we'll see you tomorrow.